Energy powered by Sutter App. I'm Ria Mittal and I will be your host for the event. So let's understand what has happened in the last three days. To begin with, those last three days have been super exciting and super successful because of you all. So thank you so much for making this event a new success. And on the first day, we spoke about how you can be a part of the D2C wave and not be washed away by the wave. So we had Vineet Kumar. So we had Vineet Kumar, who is the CEO of Native, which was recently acquired by PNG. Then we had uh, Arjun Vaidya and Trisha Vaidya talk about how you can scale your business, a traditional business, to global levels. And then we had our in-house specialist Ram Menon talk about the tools that you need to scale your business to such heights. In day two, we spoke about how you can raise capital for your business. We had Capify. We had a hello tax coming, and in day three, we spoke about marketing and advertising and how you can increase your brand visibility on different platforms. We had Jamie who spoke about our future of marketing, AI marketing, and innovation in marketing. And then we had Amy Lewis who spoke about why your PPC campaigns are costing you too much money. And then we had our in-house specialist Nitin Mantredi who spoke about how you can structure your campaigns for more profit. And we spoke about automation and e-cost and so much more. So make sure that you go look at that session. It has been by far my favorite. And now we are in day four, which is all about inventory management. It is really important for you to forecast your inventory and plan your inventory way before hand for Q4 because we have some important guidelines. We have some important dates for inventory management set by Amazon. Also, this session is solely focused on Amazon inventory, so just keep eye out for that. So before we begin with our session, I just want to remind you all to register for Amazon Q4 Mastery because when you register for the event, you get extra perks, such as we have additional workshops coming in for you guys, and then we also have a goodie bag which is sent out towards the end of the event to all the registered users. So make sure that you go in the description box below and get a seat right now. So to kickstart today's session, we have Saiba from Celera who will be telling you important guidelines which are given by Amazon with important dates that you have to keep in mind uh, to make sure that your inventory is going in time for Q4. So Saiba, over to you. Let's understand what those guidelines are. Thank you, Ria. Welcome to Amazon Q4 Mastery, everyone. Hi, I'm Saiba Huzaifa and I'm a customer success manager here at Celera. Let's talk about Amazon inventory inventory guidelines and important dates for Q4. Let's talk about the importance of managing and optimizing your inventory. It's important because it, it will increase your sales, help you get positive reviews. Also, you should be avoiding getting out of stock, avoid any account suspension, and obviously to maintain your sales rank. Do not go out of stock. You will lose sales momentum and obviously your revenue too. You will also see a significant drop in your keyword ranking you will lose your organic visibility of your products. If you do not have your product in stock, then obviously your buyers are going to buy it from your competitors. This is why it is really important that you manage your inventory if you are an Amazon seller. It is crucial that you never go out of stock because it affects your business and your revenue significantly. Having too much inventory. Inventory that is stagnant and not moving will actually cost you money. Too much inventory will be difficult to manage. You will have to pay more storage fees for all the inventory that is sitting in the storage facility. There is also a chance that your older inventory might get damaged as well. When shipping products for FBA, inventory that is sent out to an Amazon Fulfillment Center is generally scanned and made available for delivery within three business days. However, during the peak Q4 season, this will take a little longer. Amazon suggests that the seller should anticipate a maximum processing time of 14 days during Q4. The Inventory Performance Index measures inventory management over time, including how well you balance your inventory levels and sales. Fixed listing problems that make your inventory unavailable for purchase and keep popular products in stock. The current IPI threshold effective from January 1st, 2021 is 450. What influences your IPI score? Excess inventory, Amazon FBA sell-through rate, stranded inventory, and your in-stock inventory. Amazon inventory management and the important strategies for Q4. Understanding how much inventory you need is a challenge, especially if you're a new seller. Like I've already mentioned, 
having too little inventory as well as having too much inventory may hurt your business. But finding out your lead times and potential sales numbers can help you out in estimating the number of orders that you have to place. Lead time is the number of days between the day you place your inventory order with your supplier and the day your products are ready for purchase. If you are a seller who outsources your product, this is the data you have to learn from business. The same goes for potential sales numbers. If you get an idea about these two data, then you can anticipate when you might need to place an order for more inventory and the amount of inventory that you may need. Number two, another way to get an idea about your inventory needs is to check out existing sales data. You can examine your past sales, but if you are a beginner seller or if you are selling a new product listing, then there will not be substantial data to go by. In that case, you can check out the sales data of your competitor's listing to get an idea of the sales trend. To know more, click the link in the description below. Number three, be prepared for sales fluctuations. Sales fluctuations is something that can happen throughout the year. While small changes are normal, there are other factors that can affect product sales. The first one is seasonal fluctuations, where certain products have more demand in certain seasons. For example, raincoats and umbrellas have more demand during the rainy season. The second factor is holiday fluctuations. Certain holidays are huge for sellers. Christmas, Halloween and the 4th of July are a few examples in the busiest holidays for Amazon in the US. Then there are specific sales like Cyber Sunday that are centered on e-commerce website. And finally, there are fluctuations which are caused by pop culture trends. Fidget Spinner is a recent example of this. These factors may cause longer lead times, delays in shipments and more. It's important to forecast your inventory levels at least a couple of months in advance. You need to keep your inventory moving and deal with any increase in demand. So by anticipating sales fluctuations earlier, you can not only meet the demands but also maximize your profits. It is also important to consider the supplier's extended turnaround times for stock order during peak season. This helps you place orders with time allowed for delays due to seasonal demand and other factors such as weather. Number 4. Slow down when it's required. The best sales strategy is to not rack up customers but to not miss a single customer. There may be times when your supply might not be able to catch up with the customer demand. This will cause delays in delivery and that might cause customers to leave a negative review. When this happens, don't scare away from slowing things down a bit. One method of slowing down your sales is to reprice your product to a little higher rate. That way you do not necessarily lose customers, but your sales will slow down temporarily. If you're running a hot promotion, and your inventory levels are running low due to the increased demand, set a threshold for a set of numbers of promoted items in your inventory. Once that number is hit, you can remove the promotion and sell the remaining stock at a higher price to avoid running out completely. Number five, know your supply chain and try to optimize wherever it is needed. Understanding how your products are supplied from your manufacturer, the method of shipping, and the time taken for the shipping process is an important part of your inventory management. You can find out which process takes the most time and see if you can reduce the time. Number six, you can use the tools available on Seller Central to manage your inventory. You can view and sort your inventory, create new listings and close the older listings, manage prices and more. The restock inventory page gives recommendations to seller on which products need restocking, recommended replenishment quantity, and recommended ship date. And number seven, keep an eye on your inventory performance index. Amazon rates sellers based on their inventory performance, and if you are a seller who does not meet their expected standards, Amazon will impose storage limits. So try not to send inventory that does not sell quickly, because Amazon wants their sellers to sell more and store less. Amazon FBA phase 2021 has taken effect from June 1st, 2021. The first one is the Amazon Fulfillment Fees. This is the fees that you have to pay to Amazon to fulfill your order. This includes picking, packing, shipping, product returns and customer services. And this fee is calculated per unit. The second fee is the monthly inventory storage fees. Now this is the fee you have to pay to Amazon to keep your products in their fulfillment centers. This fee depends on the space occupied by your inventory 
and it is calculated per cubic foot. You also have to consider additional fee like FBA return processing fee, multi-channel fulfillment fee, FBA removal and disposable fee, FBA manual processing fee, FBA small and light fee. Amazon FBA fees 2021 also include other fees such as the core fee changes, uh, the fee changes for clothing, hazmat, and etc. You can find all the details in the PDF in the description box below. So that was all you had to know about the inventory guidelines uh, of Amazon for the Q4. Over to you, Ria. Thank you so much, Sada, for that important presentation on guidelines and important dates set by Amazon. I personally was noting down everything because I do not not want to miss the deadlines given by Amazon because they're very stringent on that. So yes, do check the PDFs in the description box below if you want to take away the sessions, uh, take away the understandings from the sessions that you are getting. And now we're going to understand some tips for inventory management for Q4. And we have Yoni Mazur from Gitaida coming right now. And he's going to tell you things that you should be doing right when it comes to inventory forecasting and inventory management. He also has some super innovative tips on how you can save money on shipping charges. So let's look at that. Over to you, Yoni. Thank you so much, Ria. I appreciate it. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to this presentation. I'm really excited to... Uh be uh, sharing with uh, with you today this uh, information so let me share my screen and we're gonna get going all right so this presentation is gonna focus on FBA inventory management tips especially for you know uh, for Q4 um, so what's going on is that uh, you probably guys uh, noticed this year that was pretty much challenging for Amazon sellers because of the all the Asian restrictions so just uh, you know uh, a, a, a long story I'll, I'll make it short um, when the pandemic hit, Amazon all of a sudden was not, you know, was restricting Amazon FBA sellers from shipping FBA inventory to the warehouses, right? So especially it started for a few weeks with uh, certain categories. If it wasn't the, like the most important categories for, for Amazon to, um, to sell products for people stuck at home um, because of all the quarantining, uh, those categories were not able to ship any units or inventory to FBA. Then that happened for a few weeks. And then when they opened up, they started limiting um, the amount of units that uh, sellers can ship to FBA, uh, I think it was uh, the default was 200 units. If you uh, ship your ASIN for the first time to FBA, you limit it to 200 units. As you start selling it and there's more data that comes in, that the amount of uh, units uh, that you can ship in per ASIN uh, expands. Uh, and then just a few weeks ago, Amazon changed the game again. We're going to focus on that. What, what are the changes? What's going on? And how you can manage it? Uh, because if this is going to head on in, into Q4, uh, sellers uh, need to be aware of. Uh, what the game is all about and what's the best way to play it. So hopefully you'll find this um, presentation useful uh, to manage your inventory properly in Q4 and really uh, make the most out of it. Okay. So I guess uh, before I start uh, to dive uh, all into the mixture, a little bit about myself. My name is Yoni Mazor. I'm the chief growth officer of uh, Getira. Um, let me share with you this. This is a little bit about us, about Getira. What is Getira? Is it Getira? Is it Getira? It doesn't really matter because it stands for Get Intelligent Data Analytics. Okay, so essentially we're a technology company and our mission is to help Amazon sellers uh, get the maximum FBA reimbursements that they're eligible to receive. Uh, so even if you have your own team, if you're using another provider, that's fine. You, you like them, keep them. We're able to come in and get you that more. Okay, we're very customizable. So we, live, we believe in maximum recovery uh, and make sure to tailor it to simplicity to make it simple for the sellers. We consider ourselves a global leader in Amazon FBA auditing and reimbursements for the simple fact that we operate on a global level. So whether you sell in Amazon US, Canada, Mexico, UK, and so forth, we got you covered. Um, we're actually an award-winning company. We won the gold award from the American Business Award for our dashboard technology. So once you uh, connect with Getira, it's free, it's free to join. You can get free access to our dashboard uh, and you're gonna get a lot of visibility uh, on, on everything that's going on with your FBA inventory. Now also, um, we do have a dedicated team of claim specialists and a big part of them are former Amazon employees, meaning they used to work for Amazon in the FBA reimbursements department. So we know what we're looking for, how to present the issues, how to manage the cases and stay compliant throughout every step of the way. We actually track and monitor our recovery rate. It's more than 70%. So for every 10 cases that we open on behalf of the sellers, more than seven cases usually get reimbursed. Uh, and we like to make our solutions affordable for all sellers of all sizes at any stage. So whether you just started selling an Amazon FBA, uh, or you do hundreds of millions of dollars in FBA annually, it's free to join Getira. You can come and join. And we only, uh, we don't charge a subscription. There's no contract. You can cancel any time. We only charge a fee from the recovery. So if we were able to uh, get you $100 back that you never had access to before, 
So effectively, it's money back from the dead. We charge 25%. So from $100 we got you, we'll charge $25. So let's say one month we got you $100 and we charge you $25. Next month we got you $0, you pay $0. So it makes it very, very affordable, very uh, convenient. The way I like to say it is that it's free to join and it's free to stay. It doesn't really cost anything. Okay, so uh, if you're wondering where you can find us, uh, of course you can find us on the getita.com, but also you can find us on the Amazon App Store. If you visit Amazon Sell Essential, you visit the App Store, you'll find us there. What does it mean? We, it means that we're an authorized solution provider on the platform. Okay, so it means we have a double commitment. We have a commitment to, uh, to you, the sellers, but also a commitment to Amazon to make sure that we're terms of service compliant, um, and the uh, data security, private policy, uh, so we've got to perform on the highest level. You can also find us on the Amazon SBN, the service provider network. Okay, and that's enough about us. Let's talk about business, okay? So this is what's going on. This is um, a snapshot of how Amazon changed the structure of, um, of uh, you know, storage and ASIN limitation when you ship it to FBA, right? So inventory is the most important asset of any retailer, right? I and mean, you look at a balance sheet, your inventory is, is key. And you gotta make sure to, um, to be able to sell as much as, as, much as possible of it, but as, as soon as possible. But, when Amazon made these changes, it made things very confusing, a little, uh, and also challenging. So uh, let's see what happened. So uh, what happened was before they started, like I said, you were, you know, the itch, ASIN had its own story. Now it's kind of different. What Amazon is doing is saying, no, we're gonna create four brackets, right? Four parts, okay? And these are the first two. You got um, uh, uh, storage limitation FBA uh, by standard size. You got standard size storage. For this example here, you can see that this seller uh, has a limit of 106,000 units. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if it's one ASIN or many ASINs. Uh, on the unit level, they're, they're, they're limited to 106,000 uh, units, okay? Um, and then oversized category, uh, the default limit, by the way, is 1,000 units, I guess, for all of them. This one, uh, this seller, when the changes were, were made, already had inventory in stock on standard uh, size, so already had a calculation of what is the limit based on the, on the velocity. And here in the oversize, uh, you know, this, this seller is not really using uh, the oversized storage, so it starts with the, you know, the, the benchmark is uh, a thousand units. Okay, so you got the first two brackets, standard size and oversize. Okay, and then you also have a uh, storage volume. This is kind of uh, in terms of dimensions. Uh, you'll see usually it's kind of unlimited on, uh, on what's available. So these are the two f uh, first brackets. And now we'll see uh, the further two, okay? And now they're saying, okay, not only have standard size and uh, large uh, size, uh, 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 brackets there's two more another one is for apparel for clothing so Amazon made this separation uh, I guess they have their own reasons if I had to guess it's probably uh, based on logistics and logistics centers how they like to uh, you know uh, uh, play along with all of it so they create another bracket just for apparel and uh, another one for just for footwear okay so I guess they have their own teams and specialty and technology for footwear for shoes same thing for goes for apparel but for everything else you can bundle it to standard size and, and large uh, uh, you know, size um, um, products now, what happens is, well, like I mentioned, you got, uh, you know, if you just uh, start selling on Amazon uh, or you start selling these one of these uh, um, categories uh, or brackets, you're going to start from 1,000. So that's kind of uh, challenging because uh, what if you want to ship in, let's say, uh, on apparel, you, you, you want to start a clothing line, it's your own brand, or you're a reseller, you want to start reselling, you know, uh, uh, you know nice brands uh, uh, that sell really well, uh, you're going to start from 1,000 units. So that's kind of a challenge, that's kind of hard because if you can source 10,000 units and you want to get going and that was your plan, you kind of have an issue. That's the first example of an issue. Another issue, I'm just going to go back uh, with your permission to show you uh, another example is that some sellers had this kind of situation. Let's say this seller has 106,000 units available to ship them to FBA, but all of a sudden uh, this is the limit, but uh, let's say they already have 150,000 units inside. So right away, sellers woke up in the morning, they were over uh, you know, they, they're pretty much overcharged, okay? Or they, they were, they're already exceeding the limit, so they can't ship any more inventory to FBA. Imagine that, you wake up, you say, Amazon's telling you, you have 50,000 units overstocked in FBA, they, you don't have, you know, you can keep selling it, whatever, but you can't really ship in more inventory to FBA. You're completely, completely stuck. So that was a type of challenge that we saw. Um, so we're gonna try to provide tips, uh, you, know, you know, very, very shortly on you know, ways to deal with all this madness. Um, that's another example. And yeah, so these are the main two examples. If you're just getting started, a thousand units, that's, that's an issue. How do you basically get from there and really quickly uh, um, get the, the, the wheel spinning so you can expand uh, um, the limitations? Because once you do start selling and Amazon sees the, the products move fast and the good velocity, the limits will increase and uh, you'll be on your merry way to, uh, to, uh, to being a rock star in FBA. Um, and uh, just to complicate things a bit, bit further for you guys, so you got four brackets. 
Okay, these are limiting your ability to ship products to FBA. Another thing to consider and not forget is this uh, little bar on, on underneath. Okay, it's called IPI, Inventory Performance Index. Okay, the Inventory Performance Index, it's a barometer. Uh, you know, it starts from zero to a thousand uh, uh, points. If you're in the 500 and up, you're in the green zone, it means that Amazon will charge you the least possible on your FBA storage fees. Okay, the IPI affects the storage fees. How much Amazon will charge you uh, to store your products on FBA? Okay, so obviously you want to be in the green zone because if you're in the red zone, they're going to charge you a premium. They're going to basically charge you a lot of money uh, because if your products are not moving uh, fast enough, they're part of pretty much the problem. But the real problem is, to begin with, is that there's so much demand on Amazon's infrastructure because of you know the, the growth of e-commerce that Amazon has to play smart right now and start creating all these limitations and really focus on what's really important here. And the most important thing is to have products that come in and get out as soon as possible because if they come in and get out because it got sold, Amazon is going to make their selling fees, they're going to make their fulfillment fees, and it just it means overall growth. And anything that comes in doesn't really move, doesn't really sell. It's really wasting their time and space. So uh, the way they can at least make make up for it is charging you, uh, overcharging you, or charging you a lot of money for storage fees. So uh, this is the name of the game. This is how it all works out right now. We got four brackets uh, of, of storage for FBA plus the IPI that affects how much you'll pay for storage if you have a healthy uh, indicator or not. Of course, this bar moves up and down based on the velocity, how quickly your products are spinning. So the, the, obviously, if your products are rock stars, they keep on moving, they keep on selling, all your metrics will be healthy. If you have anything that's kind of iffy, that's going to be problematic. So let's try to see what what kind of uh, solutions and tips uh, we can provide here to uh, alleviate the pain, as they say. Okay, so the name of the game, uh, until further notice, is small partial. Okay, small partial shipping is king. Okay, it might be painful, it might be uh, costing you a bit more. Uh, to ship uh, your inventory to FBA in small batches, especially if you are used to selling, you know, s sending containers in and pallets and stuff like that. Uh, if, if you're uh, close to uh, the, the limitation or you're already in the limitation, there's no other way. You got to keep the wheel spinning, so you got to start sending your inventory in small batches. And uh, what's going to happen? Uh, um, it's going to come in, hopefully, so fast. Amazon will like the matrix, and then your limitation uh, well, limits will increase, increase, increase. Might take a few weeks, might take a few months, but this is the the medicine. Okay, now it, even if so, if you're listening to this and thinking, oh, I'm going to lose so much money uh, or I'm going to pay so much money more, it's going to uh, reduce my markup or hurt my margins or even put me at a loss, I would tell you that you're right. The thing is that if you don't keep shipping to FBA and maintaining your sales rank, okay, your, your sales rank, your best sales rank, uh, your, your position in the market will decrease and, and you can do the mathematics. If you can afford uh, uh, losing rank and making less sales uh, uh, because uh, you have this situation, that's fine. But if you can't, uh, it's worth it even to, to make less margin or even take a, a loss just to keep your ranks. Okay, so no the competition, you know, it's a very, very competitive market. You got to make sure to you know, keep your, your, your position or even keep uh, continue growing it if you're on the launching stage. Uh, it's very important because, you know, this might take a few weeks, a few months, but once your limitations are in order, you can, then you can go back to shipping pallets and containers and everything. So this is kind of, um, you know, a tactical situation. Uh, uh, that you, uh, it's a tactical tip that you can use. To, so in the long-term strategy, it's going to help you. Okay, so it's painful. Uh, it's not sexy, but it actually works. Okay, that's the name of the game. Uh, so once again, sending small batches is going to rotate faster. Hopefully, it's going to uh, improve your overall selling performance matrix on the on the on the each bracket level on the storage limitation, but also on the IPI score, the inventory performance index. Okay, so uh, it's going to make it cheaper for you to store your products with FBA. Okay. And then, um, in general, now that you're you know, uh, selling an Amazon an FBA and that's your main method of fulfillment, uh, really, uh, when you plan anything to, to, to sell, uh, your current stock or even new products you want to launch into the market, kind of the name of the game is to expect it to sell within 45 days, but the maximum 90 days. Fast. The whole game is changed. You can't ship inventory for the whole year, for six months. It's just going to be very painful. It's going to be uh, problematic. And if you're limited on, on what you can send, you can't do it anyways. So you got to start sending it in small, small batches, okay? Uh, here's some more tips. Okay, of course, if you have any slow moving products in FBA, they're really not moving anywhere. You thought you can uh, push them, you thought, you thought you can do things along the a few weeks, along the few months, or even maybe a few years. Uh, just create a removal order. Take it out of, out of the game. Uh, you know, whatever is going to stay in is going to be healthy inventories. It's going to start positively affecting your, your metrics uh, uh, with Amazon, with FBA. Uh, because, like as we, as we mentioned, Amazon is signaling that it wants top-selling products to be sent to FBA, right? Capacity is limited. Amazon can't overnight create another 50 or 100 FBA warehouses because every warehouse like that it costs so much money, like billions of dollars. 
and you're kind of running out of space anyway. So this is the reality where Amazon is kind of um, dealing with the situation where the growth of demand is uh, far exceeds its ability to create infrastructure. And let's not forget, Amazon inf infrastructure, infra infrastructure is already huge, okay, in the United States and on a global level. So uh, yeah, it's interesting uh, dynamics for Amazon and how it's trying to handle uh, all this, uh, all these elements. Uh, and of course, stimulate your sales. If um, you know, just uh, it's it's a good opportunity to focus on what's obvious a little bit, but start selling more faster. And um, you know, you can use discounts, you can use coupons. Um, you can use uh, social media at your benefit if you're not really utilizing or you can utilize more social media of uh, driving traffic, healthy traffic into your listings to, to stimulate more uh, conversions and sales. Do it. Okay. It's going to improve your overall matrix with FBA and get you back on track as soon as possible. Uh, bid a little, little bit higher on ads. Okay. Uh, so if your budget, you know, uh, right now, uh, maybe increase a little bit to get more traffic. Hopefully we'll convert. Get more aggressive. This is time to be, you know, uh, time to be a bit more aggressive until the situation uh, heals. Okay, and uh, another you know, interesting idea that we saw around the community is that create bundle package offers. Um, uh, so if you have maybe a slow moving item, but then you have a fast moving item on FBA, both of them on FBA, you can create a bundle. Amazon has this mechanism in Sales Central, we can create bundles. So you can put uh, these two products together and then the, the whoever's buying it can buy it at a discount. Because you know, let's say the price of the fast moving uh, product is $20, and the slow moving product is $15, so together it's supposed to be $35. Maybe you set it as a bundle for $30 or $28 bundle it together make a better uh, offering for for um for you know consumers out there to buy and then hopefully your slow, slow moving products will start moving uh, much faster and, and get out of the way and make room on fba for your healthy inventory to come in so it could get stored and, and shipped and uh, really play the game in a healthier way another thing to consider or a tip advice that we heard in uh, in the community is that you can create a bundle maybe potentially with a large brand right so if your products can be maybe attached to a big brand let's say for example uh, you're selling uh, candies or snacks, right? Maybe you can create a variety pack where it's your snacks, but also something like uh, Pringles or uh, raw, uh, what's called Lay's chips or um, whatever, uh, whatever other big brands. You create a special basket, a special bundle, uh, uh, and then you bundle together. So you have really super brands along with your brands. It's a bundle. It's a better uh, you know, offering. And then you uh, maybe uh, start selling on FBA things a bit faster and then remove uh, and, 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 and improve all your, um, your matrix with FBA and really alleviate the pain. This is another tip and advice that we heard uh, in the community. Uh, it's not so simple, but if you can get it done, you might even find that you have a good business model where you can always kind of use uh, creativity to create unique bundles uh, using your brand name, but other big brand names. Uh, of course, do it in a, in a way where it's above board. It's all with authority, uh, just to create better offering and unique offerings for consumers out there. All right, so don't forget, once you, you know, you have all this struggle to send your product into uh, FBA uh, and you have all these uh, source limitations, uh, don't forget to manage your inventory. There's other considerations. So one, one of them is actually uh, what is Amazon charging you um, to fulfill the units, right? The, all the pick and pack fees, right? So for example, this is your product you're selling on FBA. Every time, every time Amazon, you know, picks the unit from the bin, they package it in a box, they ship it out, they charge you a fee. They call it a pick and pack fee. Now the amount of a fee that you pay or Amazon charges you is based on your weight and dimension. Okay, so. The larger and heavier Amazon think your product is, your inventory is, the more they're going to charge you. Okay, so because of that, um, uh, you have to understand that it's the best thing to do is to really ship um, to Amazon products where they, they're, they're just small and, and uh, lean as, as soon as, and as much as possible. Because let's say, for example, you you sell on regular uh, wholesale to brick and mortar stores, and when you sell on retail, the, the name of the game is big, uh, shiny packages, right? Because you got to be on the shelf, and you got to push the other competitors and say, hey. Consumer, take me from the shelf, hold me, look at me, touch me, put me in the cart, and cash me out. So the name of the game is actually packaging. In packaging, you can create a sale. With e-commerce, it's not really the situation. It's just, uh, in e-commerce, especially on Amazon, your shelf, your digital shelf, is your listing. Over there, you make everything beautiful, your enhanced brand content, your A-plus content, right? your keywords, everything, all there, your visuals, your videos. That's how you, you communicate to the consumer. You know, add me to cart, buy me out, it's all good. Because no matter what you do, the moment they're going to get their product, okay, uh, they're going to get it with an Amazon box. So once you they open it, you, you can have simple, uh, elegant packaging. It doesn't have to be big or heavy uh, or bulky. Okay, so let's give two examples here of uh, how, you know, uh, making se making sense of this all. So um, like we said, Amazon fees are based on winning dimensions of the individually packed product, right? So let's say uh, you have two sellers. They're both selling a ball, but one seller is sending it uh, inflated, okay, this way. 
which is kind of the wrong way, uh, while the other is sending it deflated. Like this gentleman here is shrinking it. Uh, like, let me give you an example of the mathematics. So let's say the ball is inflated. When you ship it in, it's 20 inches. Or if you're overseas, 20 centimeters even. We can use that example. Because of that, whenever Amazon is picking the unit from the bin, packaging a box, shipping it out, they might be charging, let's say, $10 every time. But if you squeeze it, right, and make sure it's, uh, uh, it's low in dimensions as much as possible, now it's five inches or five centimeters, now Amazon's gonna charge you, let's say, only $3 because it's gonna be a different bracket or pick and pack cost bracket. Okay, and that is how you can save a fortune because let's say uh, you sell a thousand units of that uh, product, instead of paying, uh, paying $10,000, you're gonna pay only $3,000. That's $7,000 worth of uh, savings and on and on it goes. Same idea, idea here for this uh, pair of jeans, for example. You can send it all rolled up so it takes a lot of space and storage and, and uh, Amazon will charge you more in pick and pack fees. Or you can just roll it up, put it in a shrink wrap and it's as small and light as possible and oh, you'll save a fortune on fees. So you have to keep in mind, this is the name of the game. When you ship your product to FBA, keep, make sure it's small. It's really elegant. Uh, it's not taking a lot of room. It's, it's not heavy. Uh, it's gonna save you a lot, a lot of money. Now, if you um, if your products are kind of in the borderline of, uh, of the one dimension brackets, you know, if you can trim an inch or two and, and be on a different bracket where Amazon is going to charge you lower fees, consider that. Do do whatever you can do, uh, whatever is possible to really minimize um, the weight and dimension of your product uh, that you ship the FBA. If you're shipping from your own warehouse, uh, you know, your own fulfillment centers, it's a different ball game. But even for that, uh, you know, carriers are going to charge you less and less. You know, the lighter and um, uh, smaller your product is, the cheaper it gets to, uh, uh, you know, to send it anywhere. That's simply the name of logistics. Okay, so here for you guys, for you consider, it's uh, some you know some freebies, I guess, or free tools for Amazon sellers. It's kind of a gift and bonus for you guys. You can just visit getita.com slash ebook and you're gonna get a package of uh, three things. The first thing will be in, uh, an ebook, okay? An ebook about how to read an Amazon income statement. We kind of touch with inventory, but once that inventory is sold, how does it all translate to money, right? How is Amazon paying you? What are all the fees that, that are being charged? So this uh, book dives all into the income statement, all the financial structure. So you see where a dollar begins, where uh, the dollar ends. I recommend every seller to know the numbers, but um, also share this with your bookkeeper or accountant if you have one. The second thing you're gonna get here in this package is a profit and loss template. Okay, a profit and loss template, which will help you to understand all your business cost structures, all your business expenses, everything under the sun, you put it in there. Then you're gonna be really, really be able to see if your business is making profit or making a loss. And if it's making a loss, uh, you're gonna be able to kind of recognize hopefully where and then take action there and fix that. And if your issues are related to inventory, uh, this uh, hopefully tool will help you discover it as soon as possible. Um, big, a big part of issues with a lot of sellers is really being overstocked. Uh, having too much inventory could be a death uh, sentence for any business. So managing your inventory uh, in a way where it's smart, it's really calculated and just strong will make you a champion of this game uh, of retail and especially online retail. Last thing is, is a, a template to uh, track your wedding dimensions. We just gave an example of how to manage the inventory, what's inside, you know, where you, what's the type of inventory you're gonna ship to FBA. Hopefully small and light and lean. Uh, this is a tracker that can help you keep tracking it because uh, as your product will be, uh, products and inventory will be in Amazon's fulfillment center, uh, that information might change by accident or by, uh, by intention. Maybe somebody, a competitor came in and changed your information. So you need a tracker to keep tracking that the, the wedding dimensions did not change because if they did and Amazon is overcharging, you're gonna have to open a case, tell it to Amazon so they can uh, fix the, the fees they're, uh, they're, they're charging you. So you, you'll save a lot of money. Plus you can go back in uh, 90 days and ask for a reimbursement for all the overcharges. So this is a suite of tools. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys to, um, to manage your inventory and your Amazon business in a better way. Um, and here kind of a, a quick, a quick uh, booster regarding uh, refunds and reimbursements with Amazon. This is, to be honest, this is kind of our uh, bread and butter, Getita. This is uh, the main focus that we have as an organization for sellers, Amazon sellers all over the world. Uh, so I want to give you some high level statistics for you guys to understand who's against who. So the first uh, uh, point here to make is that the FBA discrepancy rate uh, can range between 1% to 3% from your annual FBA revenue. So what does that mean? So all the FBA discrepancies can be like any inventory that Amazon lost, damaged, destroyed, uh, disposed, or overcharged you with fees, or your FBA inventory. Uh, that's all the types of discrepancies. So uh, put it all together on an annual basis. It, it can be between one to three percent from all your sales. So let's say you're making one million dollars a year in FBA sales. One to three percent could be uh, ten to thirty thousand dollars. So uh, it's up to you, the seller, to discover it. 
okay, and uh, you know, open cases with Amazon and manage it, and hopefully Amazon will give you back, uh, uh, you know, uh, money with you know, in the form of uh, reimbursement. Another way to look at it is that for every 100 units you're shipping to FBA, between one to three units is going to experience an issue. Like I mentioned, it's going to get lost, damaged, destroyed, disposed, or overcharged with fees. Uh, and once again, it's up to you to get the maximum uh, 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 or get everything that you owed back uh, to you. Okay, uh, at high level, Amazon allows up to 18 months. Okay, to, um, to, to go back on your data and all your transactions to find all these issues and get reimbursements. Uh, and if you don't, after 18 months, uh, it's going to expire. So do not miss out. Okay, it's your money. It's better you know, for you to have it back in your pocket than just letting it go to waste. And of course, if you're opening cases with Amazon, and Amazon uh, is going to ask you for more documentation, pay attention. Don't just think I'm going to open a case, I'm going to get paid, everything is done. Uh, listen and look, look at what they're saying and what they're trying to say and if they're asking for more information, give it to them to make sure that you really get the reimbursement. Okay, and of course, if this is too much of a headache to anybody here uh, or too overwhelming because uh, the next slide will show you a little bit uh, what is the scope of FBA auditing. This is because uh, so, if you're wondering what you need, why you might need help with FBA auditing, just have a look. This is a list of the things that we look to, uh, for with FBA discrepancies. So if anything here looks strange or unfamiliar to you, it probably uh, probably means that uh, you're owed money, and uh, if, if it's too complicated, too confusing, there's solutions out there that can help you. It happens to be the Gitira we one of them. So if you ever need our help, we'll be happy to help. Like I said, it's free to join. We can take it away uh, the tears uh, and put money back in your pocket. Uh, you know, we only charge a few for successful uh, in getting you well, money back. Once again, even if you have your own team, if you're using somebody else, you want to keep them keeping. We're, we're going to be able to come in whatever is being left behind, bring it back to your pocket. That's kind of our, our purpose and mission. And um, here I want to show you a case study of the positive impact of good FBA auditing. So here we have a case study of an $18 million seller, sold about 300,000 units in a year, right? Of which close to 9,000 units got affected. You know, got uh, inventory that got lost, damaged, destroyed, disposed, or overcharged with fees, uh, which puts it on the higher spectrum, which is 2.8% of you know, discrepancy rate. Gatita were able to help recover 150,000 you know, back to the seller, which pushed the bottom line by about 11%, which is huge. And why? Because before Gatita, the profit was 1.3 million. We added 150,000 more and boom, it pushed the bottom line by about 11% because all this money you're gonna get back, you never expected to have anyway, goes back to your bottom line, to your profits, okay? Which is really, really uh, impactful. Now, there's two more uh, points where it can be even more impactful. One of them is uh, if you're trying to sell your Amazon business. If you're sell trying to sell your Amazon business, Every dollar that you're making profit, whoever's buying a business is going to pay you a multiple. So let's say you're going to get a multiple of three or four or five X, let's say three X for example. So for every dollar you add to your profit, you're going to get three dollars from whoever's buying your business. So all of a sudden, if we got you back 150,000 and you're going to get a three X for your business, right? Because you're selling Amazon business, that's going to be worth 450,000. Boom, a big impact, okay? We're going to go back 18 months, whatever was left behind, bring it back to you. Every dollar is worth three, four, fives more. Depends on your negotiation skills. Whoever you're selling your business to, obviously you want to get the highest multiple possible. Now, uh, it also works on the opposite side. If you just bought an Amazon business, right? Whoever sold you the account, the Amazon account and the Amazon business, you're going to be able to go back 18 months on all the data and whatever is opportunity that is there, right? If any of the inventory that got affected with all the discrepancies, you're going to be able to bring it back into your pocket. So let's say you bought this account. We went back 18 months, you got $150,000 back. Out of nowhere, it improved your investment, your return on investment, uh, I'd rather say. So this kind of is a quick, say, a quick case study for, for you guys to understand what can be the positive impact of uh, successful FBA and powerful FBA auditing and reimbursements. Now, if anybody wants kind of to get a, you know, give us a try and try us out, we did prepare a special offer for uh, the Q4 Mastery uh, followers. Um, the first $400 we're going to recover for you will be free. We're not going to charge you a penny. You know, so this is a guarantee because it might take us a day, it might take us a year to get you $400. We're going to get that back. We're not going to charge you a penny. After we got you $400, if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. If you want to leave, that's fine as well. We're just here to help. Uh, that's kind of our mission. Um, all you got to do is visit getita.com, click on free sign up, and uh, just use this uh, promo code SAP400, or just visit uh, getita.com slash seller app. And that's it. I hope uh, if you know if uh, and this was helpful, uh, how to manage your inventory, uh, an FBA. Uh, you know, we focus on the limitations. We focus on what your products are already in. What can you do in terms of winning dimensions? How does that might affect your pocket? Uh, and we also touch the inventory performance index, uh, which is uh, based on storage. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. My email is yoniamagatita.com. You can also visit uh, gatita.com. There is a chat box or contact us page. We have a friendly team that will help you out. Um, 
that's it. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ria. I hope everybody enjoyed. I wish you a successful Q4. Uh, you know, things are exciting in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of growth, a lot of potential, a lot of opportunities. So work hard, focus hard, um, and uh, you'll make uh, good things happen. So good luck to everybody. Take care. Thank you so much for that amazing presentation, Yoni. Those 30 minutes have helped me understand how I can forecast my inventory in a right manner that can save me money in shipping and so much more. So thank you so much for that informative session. And of course, FB errors do occur sometimes by Amazon warehouse workers. And of course, they do charge you quite a lot for it. So how do you make sure that your FBA errors that Amazon is making, you're reimbursed for those errors? Don't worry, we have seller logic coming right now. We're gonna talk about how you can get reimbursed for all the errors that Amazon makes and of course, help you save money in this Q4. So over to you, Ernie, and let's understand how FBA reimbursements actually work. Hi, and thank you for the introduction, Ria, and thanks for being here. Um, today, I'm going to tell you how to manage effortlessly all FBA errors which happen at your Amazon account or accounts as well. For example, when you're active on several marketplaces besides Northern America, maybe Europe or Japan. But first of all, who am I? I'm Arne Wolf, I'm Director of Customer Success and I'm responsible for the support department here at Logic. and I'm with Logic since September 2019 and before that I worked for Amazon, the seller support Germany and was responsible there for FBA seller support department especially, but I also worked on the other departments like retail, new customers, B2B, brands and all the other stuff and my background gives me the opportunity to say that mistakes happen in every fulfillment center from amazon every day and that's common and despite the rumors amazon mainly employs people i know that i work there but even little hitting errors can turn into a big deal for you um, bear in mind that every single unit of your goods are stored in bins in different shelves and aisles, and these accounting errors can cost you thousands of dollars each year. And in fact, Amazon is obligated to reimburse you. Okay then, let's have a look on the main issues, what leads to the loss of so much money. At first, there are damaged uh, items which are now unsellable and damages can happen at the warehouse or when dispatched to the customer or each to the fulfillment center uh, at second there are lost returns after they return to the fulfillment center because they can be misplaced or with the wrong booking id at the wrong fnskeu for example and also incorrect calculated fba shipping fees is a third most common issue that happens uh, with FBA and now what you can do to declutter your inventory is to open your seller central account and download up to 12 FBA reports and then cross analyze these reports 12 reports in Excel analyzing each day and keep in mind that even a single ASIN with about 100 units can already have several bookings per day. These several events can be, for example, order cases, refunds and returns, newly received items, warehouse transshipments, and so on. And even for a medium sized seller, it means a lot of work for hours every day. And yet, it is likely that many errors are not found, and therefore, the money is lost. And analyzing FBA errors is not worth your worthwhile time. To sit hours for hours at your desk with Excel files to analyze them. That's why SellerLogic developed the Lost and Found tool. And our Lost and Found tool from SellerLogic can save you time, effort, staff costs, and therefore it's more economical. But still, Lost and makes sure that the reimbursement ends up in your account and also what's more important <laughs> at your wallet. And also, Seller Logic Lost and Found Tool finds 
every previously and undiscovered. That's really important uh, because maybe you have found some uh, issues and requested a reimbursement before you uh, activate Lost and Found. And every previously and undiscovered error without an exemption is found by Lost and Found. Um, that's enormous because up to 12 reports, it's huge. It's huge. It's a lot of work. Can't believe me. And I know what it means. Um, but how does Seller Logic Lost and Found works? How does it work for you? Our tool analyzes these 12 mentioned FBA reports in the background while you take care of your daily work, for example, or even when you sleep or spend time with your family. Uh, uh, for every found error, a separate case is open. Each case gives you all in the information you need as clearly and precisely as possible. And Seller Logic Lost and Found also provides all necessary text and information to request the reimbursement at the Amazon seller support. And all you need to do is to copy and paste these text to Seller Central into the contact form. And here is an example of a case how it uh, looks like with the upper part of the case of a lost and found case. Here you can identify the status of this case, also the affected Amazon account, the marketplace, and if you have more than one selling account I mentioned earlier, for example, then you can directly identify which account is affected. You can also see what case type is it. Um, is it related to an order case or FBA fees, inco incorrect calculated FBA fees, or in this example, it's a case which is stock related in tech of misplaced units. Even the estimated reimbursement is shown, what you can expect when Amazon will grant your reimbursement request. And the blue colored part of the sentence uh, highlighted open a case on Amazon and Seller Sentry. It's directly linked to the appropriate tech form in Seller Central so, so that you easily open a new case. And you don't have to click within uh, Seller Central. You only click on this linked part of the sentence and then open up at your Seller Central and you can go on by this one here you can see it's case description and the you can see the title it's uh, the contact reason you have to fill in at the contact form and the case description and all you have to do is like i said before to copy case title and the description to the clipboard and paste them into the contact form and that's easy that's all and the average amount of, an uncl of unclaimed FBA reimbursements per year is about 6,480 euros and 90 cents. And it's approximately 70,744 US dollars. And however, the amount depends significantly on the seller's industry, of course, but some of our customers got five or six digit reimbursements. And that's huge, that's enormous. And uh, I believe that most of you was previously, previously in contact with the Amazon seller support. And so you know that reimbursement requests can be refused by Amazon. But what then? Our support team is just that, the support. All re rejected reimbursement claims are manual reviewed by us. And then we assist you in the communication with Amazon. And we also provide follow-up texts for the following communication with Amazon if necessary. Yeah, so that you can be absolutely clear, don't miss a case, write the wrong uh, reply to Amazon and so on. But after all, if no refund should come about on the part of Amazon, we do not charge a condition for this case. Um, you only pay when Amazon pays. Does Amazon pays you uh, money, you don't have to pay us money. Uh, that's easy. So, but who we are? Who is Seller Logic? Um, we are based in Düsseldorf, Germany. We develop software for Amazon sellers, and actually, we have two dynamic tools that can be easily connected with just a few click 
clicks to your selling on Amazon account. Uh, besides Seller Logic, we also, besides Lost and Found, sorry, uh, we also have the Seller Logic repricer, which sets the best prices for you, for your goods, of course, to win the buy box. Uh, our mission is from the beginning in 2016. It is to save you time, increase productivity while generating maximum profits. And now your next step should to minimize your loss and to increase your revenue is to get in contact with one of our Amazon professionals. So let's get your money back, visit our website, get a personalized advice and discover how much money still how much money Amazon still owes you, sorry. So that's it from me and thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed it, learned a lot and now back to Ria. Bye! Thank you so much Ernie for that presentation. I'm really excited on what uh, software like Seller Logic is doing to help Amazon sellers get reimbursed the right way this Q4 or any other selling quarter to be honest. So thank you so much for your presentation and I'm repeating again let us know what you think of these um, sessions today in the comment section below or in the live chat which is happening right now. And of course, do save a seat for the event before it ends because we have extra perks for people to register. We have extra workshops and we send out a goodie bag towards the end of the event so you don't want to miss that out and make sure that you register for the event. So let's have a quick recap on what we learned today. So first we have Sada from Sadara who spoke about important guidelines and dates that you need to remember for Q4 that are set by Amazon. Really important session, I hope everyone made notes and put them on your calendar so you do not miss them. And then we had Yoni Mazur come in who spoke about important tips that you all need to know in terms of inventory management and shipping and your product dimensions play an important part of it. So that was a really interesting session Yoni, I would like to thank you for it. And then we had Ernie from Seller Logic who spoke about how Amazon makes FBA errors in their warehouses and how you all can be reimbursed by it. So of course that's a very important session because most of the sellers out there do not even know that these errors are happening. So I think the whole process by Seller Logic has made it very easy to get reimbursed. Please watch that session. Thank you so much Ernie for such an impressive presentation. So thank you so much for watching everyone. This was the end of day 4 and of course the last day of Amazon Q4 Mastery is going to be a big one because we're going to be talking about data and how data can transform your business. Types of data that you need to understand, how you can track your product, data metrics that you need to keep in mind to track your products. Really important session, so I'll see you all tomorrow and do not forget to register for the event and until then, happy Sunday.